Okay. So maybe Sauron is sort of going to give the first of his uh, three lectures on uh, McDonald polynomials, Koska polynomials, and so on. Yeah. Arun, please. Right. Great. Okay. So I want to, um, to start as if we have forgotten everything. In fact, we have learned a lot about McDonald polynomials now. And so one of the things that I always think that one should do when you learn a theory is then try to turn it upside down and change, change the definitions, um, change the theorems to the definitions and then derive the definitions as the theorem. So, so I'm he heading that way. I'll do more, more next time, but let's try to think about it as if we knew nothing and we were trying to write down some new definitions of McDonald polynomial. So I'll work again in type GLN. So C of X, I will use my same notation of the Laurent polynomial ring. And of course the symmetric group acts um, on this law on polynomial That's right. now just for reference so si acting on a polynomial in the variables x1 up to xn is the same as the polynomial where i switch the i plus first and the i uh, variables everywhere and that's the action of the symmetric group. So SI is the simple transposition which switches I and I plus one. Okay, uh, so- Excuse me, can you make this? Sorry to interrupt. Can I do what? Can you just, uh, the screen where you're writing, can that take over a bigger portion of the screen somehow? I can, but later I'm going to, um, to keep copies of some of the pages. Well, okay, we can try the other way. Let me uh, share it the other way. Um, so, there, how, how is that? Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so now let's define, um, so the standard divided difference operator, so, del i is a map from cx to cx, um, which um, is given by, uh, so del i applied to f is f minus sif divided by xi minus xi plus one. So this is for i between one and n minus one. So using this divided difference operator, I'm going to construct the Hecke algebra, but we don't have to know that it's the Hecke algebra. We can just define no, new operators. So I'll start by defining TSI inverse simply to be by the following equation. So uh, T to the half times TSI inverse is del I XI minus t times xi del i. So this somehow actually del i xi and xi del i, these are two different kinds of Demazur operators. And this is some um, quantum commutator of, of del i and xi. Okay, so then define um, TSI uh, to be the operator which is given by TSI inverse plus T to the half minus T to the minus a half. Okay, so I have quickly several operators on the um, polynomial ring. For find TW to be TSI one up to TSI L if um, if w equal to si1 up to sil is reduced. All right. Okay, <clears throat> so, so that's enough. Now I can construct the McDonald polynomials. Polynomials. 
of course, now I'm working for, for GLN. And so we'll do this by recursions. So these are recursions to construct, uh, construct emu. So emu, so, so I will also write emu qt sometimes, or, or sometimes if we want to be really specific, we'll write emu x1 of xn qt. And, um, and this is for any composition. So in other words, for any sequence of non-negative integers. So non-negative integers, a length n sequence, z greater than zero to the n. And so to the recursions, well, first we start with zero, zero. And that is by definition equal to one. So we have constructed the first one. And then we will have a rule which says that if I want to, um, so if I have a sequence mu one up to mu n, then I can rearrange it and add one to the last part and then put mu one in the second place, mu two in the third place, and so on up to mu n minus one in the last place. So, so this has a, the, the feature that it adds one. So if I had mu before, then it will add mu, it will add one to that last part. So it becomes one more box. I think of it in terms of, a, of, a, of box diagrams and I think of adding a box. So this is the recursive rule for adding a box is you get Q to the mu n times X one at E of E mu, but now I have to permute the variable. So X two up to X n, I do a cyclic permutation. X one gets replaced by X two, X two gets replaced by X three, X n minus one gets replaced by X n, and X n gets replaced by Q inverse X one. All right, so this is the operator which will add one and one box. And then I have an operator which um, allows me to switch the i-th and the i plus first position in mu. And this is equal to del i xi minus t xi del i. So we saw already that that's in secret our, uh, our Hecke algebra plus one minus t q to the mu i minus mu i plus one t divided by one minus q to the mu i minus mu i plus one t. So that's a big constant. All of that applied to e mu. Uh, does, it, does it make sense? So, so I just take this, this e mu and I apply this combination of operators. This last one is just a big constant times the old emu. And the first part is TSI inverse times the old emu. And that gives me the next one. I switch the, I switch the parts. And this is, this we should do this if mu i is bigger than mu i plus one. Sorry, Arun, so, so is there any types I have a quick question. In the, in the second equation, in the second factor on the right, yeah. in the fraction, is there a t times one minus t in the numerator? t times one minus t, that's right. This is a t, yeah. Okay. t. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, so, so this is enough to define the non-symmetric McDonald polynomial. So, so now compute. And I put in the problem sheet um, some examples, which hopefully you can verify to compute these emus. Um, Sorry, and what if mu i is uh, less than, or I guess less equals mu i plus one? Uh, 
No, no. Oh, you don't need it. You have to be constructed inductively, and that's so you'll never encounter that situation. Yeah, if I have, if I have, uh, I don't have to switch mu i and mu i plus one if they're equal because that's it right. doesn't change the partition, the the composition. Okay. Yeah. And this is sufficient to yeah to compute it for every mu. Should be sufficient to compute them all. That's right. That's right. Okay. So now we can define the symmetric ones. So, so if I have a lambda, lambda one up to lambda n, um, which is a partition, so, so that means that I have lambda one greater than or equal to lambda two greater than or equal to lambda n, so dominant, a dominant way. Then I'll just define P lambda qt to be some constant, uh, which we write one over w lambda of t, times the sum over the symmetric group of w applied to e lambda times the product i less than j of xi minus txj divided by xi minus xj. Okay, so, so here, this W lambda, so, so uh, one over W lambda T is, makes the coefficient, the coefficient of X to the lambda, which by which I mean X one to the lambda one up to X n to the lambda n equal to one. All right, so so this is some you just you just do the symmetrization and you compute, and then you renormalize to make the coefficient of x to the lambda be equal to one. And so hopefully this gives us a definition now of the symmetric McDonald polynomial. Sorry, quick question. So uh... If mu i is less than mu i plus one, then you think of uh, si acting as the identity. No, no, no. If mu i is less than mu i plus one, I will have uh, constructed e mu earlier in the recursion. No, I know, but from this p lambda definition, what oh. do you do when uh, when si acts? I, oh, I oh, I, in I p lambda, I only have e la e. In p lambda, I'm only using e lambda, so I'm okay, only so using you, decreasing. Okay, okay. So you act w on lambda itself. Well, I act w on this whole polynomial. So, no, so this, I understand. But uh, yeah, so I, I should so I should interpret the wth term to be acting on uh, lambda as well. I mean, it 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 permute lambda as. No, it's not acting at all on lambda. This e lambda now is just some polynomial, might yeah. be. Uh, and so w just takes and permutes the variables in this in this polynomial. Oh, oh, sorry. So w acts on the x size. Okay, so sorry. Yeah, yeah. w acts on the x size in this formula. <laughs> Thanks. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, so in this formula, it doesn't act on lambda at all, just on the polynomial on the variables. That's right. Okay, so that gives me a definition now of the symmetric McDonald polynomials. And, uh, and uh, sorry, I, uh, Arun, I have a question. One of, uh, so the W is in SN. What is that subscript? Yeah, S. W. Here, here. This, this is this is SN. Yes, it's the symmetric group. Ah, it looked like a mu. Okay, but also your last comment in answer to Arun's question. What, this W acts, does not act on the E lambda. What did you say? Or does it? It, it acts, right? It acts on this polynomial by ah, permuting the variable. Right, on the whole polynomial. Okay. That's right. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, sure. So, so for, from our previous lectures, if we have an infinite memory, which I don't, you might remember, so this is just a remark that the definition of the whole Littlewood polynomial 
uh, Littlewood is, is P lambda zero T. And this is, was given, um, I think in Urban's lectures, but I don't remember who, as W X to the lambda product I less than J X I minus T X J divided by X I minus X J. So, so the, the um, definition which I'm proposing for the symmetric McDonald polynomials is very similar to the definition of the whole Littlewood polynomials, except that the x to the lambda in the whole Littlewood case has gotten replaced by e lambda. And certainly this is, I always think of the e's as replacements for the x to the lambdas. So they're, they're analogs. Okay. Um, uh, Great. I have a question. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Is it not true that the symmetric polynomial for GLN case is indeed the Holly Tree polynomial? Uh, the, the McDonald polynomial is not just the whole little word. No. It's more wow. many cues in it. Um, the word polynomial does not have any cues in it. Oh, right. 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 Yes, Okay, great. So now let's start on the, the vile character formula. So let's let the delta be n minus one, n minus two, one, zero. Um, so, so that if I take lambda plus delta, that's lambda one plus n minus one, lambda two plus n minus two, so on lambda n minus one plus one lambda n. All right, so this is uh, the, what, what I would call the row shift. And we define two very important quantities here. So capital A delta is the product over I less than J of Xi minus Txj. And small a delta is the product over i less than j of xi minus xj. Okay, so now I can define what I would call the fermionic McDonald polynomial. So this is capital A lambda plus delta of QT is equal to capital A delta divided by small a delta the sum over the symmetric group of the sign of the permutation W acting on E lambda plus delta. All right. So, so this, this is, we're acting on E lambda plus delta, and this is an anti-symmetrizer. And then I take that anti-symmetrizer and I, multiply it by this factor. So in fact, because it's anti-symmetric, it's divisible by this a, del this a delta in the denominator. So, so this, um, this operation is always possible. Okay, we'll talk more about it in a moment. So now let me state the theorem. Uh, maybe we do it this way, which I find quite an amazing theorem. This is a theorem of McDonald. So first it says, well, the first part is not, uh, not deep. Uh, it says that A zero plus delta QT is just equal to A delta. So the product over I less than J of XI XJ. Think of that as a vile denominator. That's and the second part of the theorem is that P lambda Q, QT is equal to A lambda plus delta QT divided by A delta QT. Okay, so this is, as far as I know, this is a theorem of McDonald. All right. So that's what I would call the vile QT vile character formula. 
this is the QT file character. And if you specialize to Q equals zero, you get the usual one, I guess. No, if you specialize to, uh, to um, let's see, if you specialize to Q equal to zero, Morally, your e lambdas become x to the lambda plus delta. That's that's one. right. So so uh, so let's so this gives um, s lambda equal to a lambda plus delta divided by a delta at q equal to zero. So so that's the specialization which recovers the classical one. Okay, so let's just put it as a homework is to find the proof. So of course, one way to find the proof is to go to McDonald's book and look at look for it. Um, but I, I would like to have some more proofs of this. I think this is somehow a deep result and it should have many, many different proofs. Uh, just, just like the, the formula for the sure function has many different proofs um, depending on your point of view. So, so I, I hope that it will, okay. So, um, so let, let me talk about the boson fermion correspondence. Uh, fermion correspondence. So first I'm going to do the classical one, which is the zero zero version of the boson fermion correspondence. So when I'm doing zero zero, I have no Hecke algebra. I have just the symmetric group. So P zero is the symmetrizer and E zero is the anti-symmetrizer. So minus one, W, w in the symmetric group. Okay, so these of course are used to define the monomial symmetric function, um, the monomial symmetric function. Which is M lambda in McDonald's notation, which is a constant times P zero X to the Lambda. So you just symmetrize and then you adjust the constant so that the coefficient of X to the Lambda is one. So, so we're constant is so that um, the coefficient of X to the Lambda in M Lambda is one. Okay, so then we can define the fermionic, uh, fermionic, or the, let's, let me say it this way, the monomial, monomial fermionic function exactly the same way. So this is A lambda plus delta which is a constant times E zero X to the Lambda plus Delta. So you adjust it so that the coefficient of X to the Lambda plus Delta is one. And it put it on the problem sheet to compute this constant also, which is quite easy. All right. Okay, so now I have a, a so some, this symmetric is, is the same as bosonic. And fermionic is the same as anti-symmetric or skew-symmetric or whatever. Fermionic is a good word because there are too many words for skew-symmetry. Okay, this is the, now the master picture. So, so master picture, well, zero, zero master picture. So I like to package everything into one very beautiful correspondence. So the first thing is that if I take SN invariance, that's symmetric functions. 
And symmetric functions is of course equal to P0 CX because P0 is the symmetrizer. So if I symmetrize my polynomials, I get symmetric polynomials, all right? And then if I look at, if I try polynomials, well then it's easy to show that this things are divisible by the Vandermond determinant and that the quotient must be a symmetric function, all right? So, so any anti-symmetric polynomial, any baryonic polynomial is divisible by A delta. And, and if I take A delta times a symmetric function, I get a fermionic polynomial. Okay, now the amazing thing is that these two vector spaces are isomorphic by a very simple isomorphism. You just multiply by the vial denominator, you by the Vandermont. And that makes these two, the, the bosonic space, the symmetric functions, and the fermionic space isomorphic, just by multiplying by the vial denominator. Of course, here I have my favorite basis M lambda. And here I have my favorite basis A lambda plus delta. And these were the easiest possible things to construct because I just took the symmetrizer, applied it to a monomial that produces the fermionic guy. I take the symmetrizer, I apply it to the monomial that produces the, the bosonic uh, monomial symmetric function. But now these two spaces are isomorphic. So I can look at the pre-image of this right-hand basis. I can, what, what, what symmetric function does it come from? And this is one way to discover the sure function. So you could use this to discover the sure function. And this is the, the master picture then. It gives us already something quite, quite deep. It gives us these sure functions. And then we can study the Casca numbers. Um, these are these numbers, K lambda mu, uh, given by uh, taking the sure function and expanding it in terms of monomial symmetric functions. Right. So, so, so does it? I hope. I hope it. It makes sense. So, we just were studying symmetrizers. We have two kinds of symmetrizers. We have bosonic symmetrizers and we have fermionic symmetrizers. And the two spaces they turned out to be isomorphic. The first space has a favorite basis. Second space has a favorite basis. But if I take the favorite basis in fermionic space and pull it back to symmetric functions, I get a new basis. Now I have two bases in symmetric functions. And so, of course, I want to ask, well, what is the relationship between these two bases? The Koska numbers. All right. Okay. So now we want to do the same thing um, again for the QT case, for the McDonald case. So QT boson fermion correspondence. Okay, so in this case, we have also bosonic symmetrizer. So let's do it slowly. The bosonic symmetrizer is the sum over the symmetric group. And now instead of putting W, I put TW and I have a small, uh, normalization because of the way that I had normalized the T's. And this is a symmetrizer, which we will call one zero. So, so I want to remind you that in the, in the previous case, I had 
just the symmetrizer in this group algebra of the symmetric group. And now I have a new operator, which is also like a symmetrizer. Okay, and then I have also a fermionic symmetrizer. Tracer, which they call epsilon zero, which is the sum over W in the symmetric group of minus T to the minus a half to the length of W, TW. And again, we, we remember that we had E zero before was the sum of minus one to the length of W, W in the symmetric group case. This was in the group algebra of the symmetric group. So these are T analogs, or, or these are Hecke algebra analogs of the previous symmetrizers. Uh, sorry, a quick question. So yeah. do we know, how do we know that this one zero gives you a, a symmetric function? Was that all? Uh, we don't yet, we don't okay. yet, but that's ah. one of the zero, one of the results <laughs> is, ah. is yes. So ah. I haven't, uh, okay. um, but a priori, no, you don't. And mm -hmm. that takes some work. And it takes a little bit of computation to, to figure that out, yes. Okay. Okay, so now the symmetric, oh, here another definition, which is actually quite close to what you just asked, is that the symmetric McDonald polynomial, uh, polynomial, can be defined as you take just, well, I have a normalizing constant. So the symmetric McDonald polynomial is some constant times the bosonic symmetrizer applied to Elang. Okay, so it's not trivial, but it's, it's also not too difficult that to show so, so let me write, show that this, show that this, um, that this matches um, the, the previous definition. Of P lambda QT. Actually, this is, this was a, this formulation was a great discovery of McDonald in 1970. If you ever get a, get a hold of these spherical functions on p-adic groups, these were some lecture notes from Chennai, I believe, in, in 1971. And they, he, he, this, you can tell this was the first time that this was discovered, this, this fact, that these two definitions are equal. Okay, so the fermionic, so now I have a, a good idea as I can define a fermionic McDonald polynomial, uh, polynomial as a lambda plus delta is equal to some normalizing constant times epsilon zero e lambda plus delta. So exactly as before, and again, show that this matches the previous. Uh, this matches the previous. Definition of A lambda plus delta. I mean, once, once um, McDonald's once McDonald told us how to do this first one, then the second one is not so difficult. Uh, it's, it's exactly the same computation, more or less. Okay, but now we have a beautiful master picture. Um, so this is the master picture. So, this says, so the first thing is, is what Arvind asked, is that if I take the symmetrizer, 
the bosonic Hecke algebra symmetrizer and I apply it to polynomials, then I get symmetric functions. All right, so this is, a, this is the first little theorem. This is not, not difficult, um, but it, it, is, it is a few, it takes a little bit of, of calculation, which, which um, I think I put it on the problem sheet, but it, anyway, uh, uh, there are, I say one reference for some of these things is I have a paper with Kendra Nelson. That, that's a, something I can refer to. Uh, see uh, my paper with Kendra Nelson. about, uh, that was about 2002 or something, 2003. Okay. All right, so then I can take the anti-symmetrizer and apply it to polynomials. And you get exactly capital A delta times symmetric functions. All right. Arun, I have a question here we are. We are not keeping track of Q and T and so on. Like once you take the complex field as base field, there is there is a T because there is a T in the Hecke algebra. So so these these operators they have a T in them. Let's remember that uh, that T S T S I inverse. is equal to partial i x i minus t x i partial i. So there is a t, but in at the moment, my formulas don't seem to have a q in them, except in one place. And that is, that is this is an e lambda qt. So that's the only places that a qt has, that the q has arisen. But in the operators themselves, there's only T. So in this line, which we are at, there is a priori only a T. We don't see because the operator involves small T and the polynomials are just polynomials. And so. But CX doesn't have T, no? so you need to extend the field. No? So I, I mean, T for me is always some real number between zero and one. Oh, okay. I chose it <coughs> yesterday. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so then this again is an isomorphism of vector spaces. And again, the map is quite easy. You just multiply by this T by So it's maybe a, I remind, let's see if we have a place to put it. Um, I'll just remind you that A delta is the product over I less than J of Xi minus Txj. So this is a Vandermond determinant, except that it has a factor of T in, in every factor there. Okay, so that's, that's a vector space isomorphism. And of course here, I have my favorite, my favorite basis, which is P lambda QT, which I obtained just by symmetrizing, just by symmetrizing the non-symmetric McDonald polynomial. And then I have over here, my favorite basis on the right is A lambda plus delta QT which I obtained just by symmetrizing, skew symmetrizing, fermionic symmetrizing, the E delta, E lambda plus delta. Okay, so now I can play my game again and I can ask, okay, what does, I take the basis from the right and put it back on the left and what do we get? We get P lambda Q Q T. That's exactly the vile character formula. Because if you remember the vile character formula said that P lambda Q Q T was equal to A lambda plus delta Q T divided by A delta. 
right? That's the, the uh, McDonald's vile, QT vile character from that. All right, so, so I have now uh, the QT master picture. And uh, so if you remember before in the master picture, we had the monomial symmetric function here and the sure function here. So, so these two functions have changed. The monomial has turned into P lambda QT and the sure function has turned into P lambda QQT. And so I can define some QT numbers. Um, so I'm going to call them curly K lambda mu QT by comparing the new basis to the old basis. QT, uh, P lambda QT. All right, so, so these, um, as far as I know, these have not been studied at all. I don't know of any paper about these, but I am convinced that they are very fundamental. Um, and hopefully we'll So from this something. point of view, P lambda Q, Q, T is, are more fundamental according to you than P lambda Q, T? Well, the, the data, the information in, the, in P lambda Q, Q, T is, is exactly the same as the information. In yeah, yeah, I know, but from definition so, point of view, uh, I don't know which is more fundamental. Are the monomial symmetric functions more fundamental or are the sure functions more fundamental? The, the, the very strange thing is that P lambda, the single P lambda is trying to play both roles. Mm -hmm. It's trying to at the same time both be a sure function and a monomial symmetric function. I'm sorry, there's a typo here. Which is very, very strange, I don't know. I mean, uh, in the original, from the first zero zero picture, I mean, the shores are clearly more fundamental, I would say, no? Uh, they carry some representation theoretic content. Oh, by the way, and the shores try to play the role of the E lambdas in, in the original one as well. I mean, as a special case. No, yeah, e lambda I, I, non-symmetric. Yeah. I, I mean, e elementary symmetric polynomials in the original unspecial. S lambda can special. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't. I mean, it's, uh, it's some philosophy which you can talk about forever, ever, but I don't really know. I don't. <laughs> um, okay, so there's still some time. So let me talk about the zero T boson fermion correspondence, which in fact um, was um, a, a, a very Im important. Uh, thing because it stimulated the geometric Langlands program. All right, so, so first of all, let's state a proposition, um, which actually I, I know how to prove it, but I, I don't know if, uh, it's not the best proof elementary uh, somehow. I, 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 because I, I have formulas for the monomial expansion of E lambda, um, for example, in my paper with Wei Ying Guo, which we distributed some time ago. And I can look at those formulas or I can look at Hagelin, Heyman, Lohr formulas and I can deduce that when you put Q equal to zero in E lambda, you get, um, uh, you get, X to the lambda. So, so let me just say use uh, Alco walk or non attacking filling formulas. I haven't really tried to do it just directly from the recursion. It may be possible uh, formulas for E mu. to deduce this. But I, I would like a better proof. So if somebody discovers a nice slick proof of this fact, then that would be nice. Okay, so now I can 
recall that the Hall Littlewood polynomials would uh, polynomials are p lambda zero t, which are a constant times symmetrizer x to the lambda. And the spherical Whitaker functions, so this were originally studied from the point of view of piadic groups, there's a very important work of Castleman and Shalaika. These are the A lambda plus delta zero t's, which are constant times epsilon zero, x to the lambda plus delta. Okay, so I'm just putting q equal to zero in what we did previously. And I'm using this, this fact to change the e to x at q equal to zero. But now let's write the, the master picture. So the zero t master picture Um, and this was written down by Lustig in 1981. And it, it um, motivated a huge amount of mathematics. So we've seen the first line before is that if I polynomials, I get symmetric function. And if I fermionic symmetrize polynomials, I get the t vial denominator times symmetric functions. And these are isomorphic and the map is just multiplication by the vial denominator. Okay, but now I have my favorite basis is the whole little woods here. Or, or you could call it the naive basis because we didn't do anything except symmetrize a monomial. And my naive basis on this side is the Whitaker functions, right? So I symmetrize a monomial, fermionic symmetrize, I get this Whitaker function. And Lustig realized that the castleman shalika formula, which was known from piadic groups, gives you at this moment the sure function, which is p lambda zero zero. All right. And that motivated a huge amount of, uh, of, uh, of mathematics because uh, then at that moment, Lustig realized that this symmetric functions is the same as the representation ring of the Langlands dual group, uh, G check, complex group. And this space epsilon zero CX is the convolution algebra of perverse sheaves, uh, sheaves on um, G mod N. So these are some Whitaker, these are now called Whitaker sheaves. And there's actually a space in, in between, which is the perverse sheaves on the loop Grassmannian. And so Lustig realized that these things are all the same and that they have bases and this gave birth to a huge amount of wonderful things, Drinfeld and so on, Deline, uh, and it's now a big business. All right, so, but, from our point of view, let's go back to just uh, combinatorics. This is the definition of the koska folks polynomials. And this is really how folks, uh, folks found them. So these are k lambda mu t, because he was looking at whole on, on, uh, and, and he discovered, he realized that if I take the short functions, which is this basis here, 
And I expand it in terms of the, the Hall Little Woods, which is this basis here, then I get some very interesting coefficients, k lambda mu t. And these are called the Costco Folks polynomials. So just from our picture, so we know, so we we know that k lambda mu t is pretty k lambda mu zero t from our comparison of the master pictures. Okay, so um, I should remark that McDonald has, so the reason I used a curly K uh, here, I use, use um, curly K because in McDonald's book, in McDonald, K lambda mu QT means something else, which I'll discuss next time something else. All right. Uh, so that's why I uh, use curly. Arun, may I ask a question? So in the right hand side, the T somehow cancel each other? Is that what? Uh, uh, there is no the right hand side, side of what? The left side has no T, right? That's right. That's a miracle. Yes, that was a, that was a miracle that the left side has no T. The T's somehow magically cancel each other and disappear. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's quite shocking. Yeah. Yeah, it always has been quite shocking. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know any really good explanation. The only, the only explanation that I know of is a geometric one, which involves uh, a weighted BGG resolution, you know, there are some Barma models in the background and, and well, Vishwanath knows a lot about this, but yes, it's, it's, a, it's a not, it's amazing is I, it's all I can say, yeah. Okay. So just in the last, uh, the last minutes, I'll just remark a few things um, that we know the k lambda mu. And I'll just put it as a problem. Venkatesh always wants problems. Find q analog, find qt analogs of these statements. Of these properties. Okay, so the first one is the following statement. It says that this Costco Folks polynomial is equal to some constant. Let's not worry about the constant in front much, but let us definitely we should think about this P. So this. Um, P, X, and lambda of T is a kajdan lustig polynomial. Uh, polynomial. Uh, for the affine vial group, the affine vial group. W, and you can specify very precisely what X are. X, these are elements of a certain double coset and N lambda is an element of a certain double coset. And X can be anything, but N lambda has to be maximal length. Okay, so the details are not important. What's important is that this is a kajdan lustig polynomial. And so this Koska-Fox polynomial is 
a special case of a kazan lucid polynomial for the affine wild group. kazan lucid polynomial means intersection cohomology Poincaré polynomial for the Schubert varieties. So this is a geometric thing. So, so part of my point is that this is geometry. Is the last w equal to w naught actually in this n, n lambda? Yeah, w naught, thank you. And that's the finite uh, value group? w naught is the finite value group, yeah. that's right. Okay, so, so I don't know what is the analogous geometry in the QT case, um, although one could make wild conjectures, but I don't have any. Okay, let me state something from representation theory which says that this lambda mu, um, well, let me evaluate at Q inverse, which is some other number, actually. Maybe I should put P here is better. So again, there's some normalizing constant. So, P to the minus N of mu, don't worry about the normalizing constant. But then, yes, you do want to worry about this chi lambda of G of U mu. So chi lambda of G here is the character, the complex character of the finite Chevalier group GLN FP appearing in the induced representation from B to G, so this is G, of the trivial. So if you induce from the Borel, if you induce from upper triangular matrices to G, then the components are indexed by partitions. And this chi lambda is the character of the representation of GLN. This is a finite group because FP is a finite field with P elements. So this is a character of a finite group, a very specific one. And U mu is the unipotent matrix of Jordan form, form Meal. Right. So, so this is an amazing state. This, this says that if I take a character, so just go back to your first course in representation theory. This is a finite group, and this is an irreducible character. I want irreducible. And I evaluate that character on this specific matrix, this specific element of the group. That gives me this Koska Fox poem. So, so once again, for the QT case, for the Qs and Ts, I have no idea. Is it a character of some, some module or not? I, I don't know. It's completely um, unknown. And then the third thing I would say is what we were discussing at the beginning is just combinatorics. Um, which says that this, this um, k lambda mu, this Pascal Folk thing, is the sum over semi centered young tableau of shape lambda and weight mu of t to the charge of t. So, so b lambda mu is equal to semi standard. Tableau shape lambda uh, weight mu and this charge is the statistic is the Lascaux Schutzenberger statistic uh, Schutzenberger. charge statistic. So I, I won't take time to describe this algorithm, but they have an algorithm for taking a tableau and, and 
doing counting some things in it and getting some number. And then it's a miracle that this just take the sum over tableau of these t to the charge, and that again gives you this Costco Polk's polynomial. What is the QT analog of this? Well, I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, this, there's a, you can make tables of the small cases. McDonald made tables of the small cases. There's definitely some, some QT analog of this. You can just look at the tables and say, see that there has to be, but I don't know what it is. I have no idea. Sorry, but he, this is done, no? This is uh, Hagelin, Hyman, Lohr, no? They, they say that their uh, algorithm specializes gives the charge statistic when you take uh, q equal to zero. No, no, they can't, they can't describe, so, so they cannot describe, uh, uh, they have a, an algorithm which, which finds a different coefficient. So, 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 so I, I want to find this k lambda qt or this k lambda qt. Now, Hagelin, Heyman, Lohr, they compute something different. They compute, um, um, P lambda QT, um, as a sum of, uh, so I think this is probably correct. Sum of phi T QT, um, of some monomials, yeah. x to the t, um, where um, where t runs over things. Yeah. And they do show that the q phi t's. They do specialize to to these Koska numbers also. Uh -huh. But these phi t's, so this is part of what I'll talk about next time. These phi t's are not the same as these, as either one of these k's. They're just not the same. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, so their algorithm does not, um, well, it does not help me solve. To, does not help me solve this, this uh -huh. problem. Okay. Uh, I don't know how to. <laughs> to use. I don't know. Of course, it's possible. Maybe it's use Hagelin, Heyman, Lohr to, to try to find these curly k's, but I don't know how to do that. It's not obvious. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. May I ask a question? Yeah, of course. That's yeah, it. So, so yes, please uh, ask. <laughs> yeah. So um, for the classical, uh, uh, in the classical case, uh, Kostka numbers appear in two situations. One is when you expand the Schur functions in terms of monomials. And the others, when you expand the elementary or complete symmetric functions in terms of Schur functions. So, is there uh, is there something like that also for? Um... That's right. For McDonald polynomials. Yes, there there are. So so that's I'm going to go through these um, these. So these are three, there are three analogs. Um, already that you have said. And those three analogs th th are there for McDonald's symmetric functions, but they're not exactly the same. Uh, I mean, I mean uh, th th you get three different analogs of, Q of Koska numbers in this way. <laughs> by generalizing these three statements, yeah. Because it's easy to expand the complete in terms of monomials, uh, but from that, uh, you can somehow try to look for a decomposition of that transition matrix into an upper and tr lower triangular part, and those are uniquely determined, so. Uh, Sorry, are, yeah. are, the, are the sums in the last two lines over lambda? Oh, over lambda, sorry. Yeah, and the mu prime is maybe not needed. It's just mu. Uh, not sure. Well, I think. Seem like yeah. too many primes in the last one. Nah, I don't. Know. If you 
Anyway, but we, 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 I agree that these transition matrices need more attention, right? that, that some of these games that we usually play in the classical case might work and might give some insight, but I don't know. Um, okay, thanks. And so what you're saying is that both this, the second and the third equations also do uh, show up uh, in the master pictures on some higher level? Or on some level. Not in the master picture. No, I don't know. I don't know how to put um, these bases into the master picture yet. Uh, yeah. So, is there a relationship between this curly? I mean, direct relationship between these curly k lambda mu's and the straight k McDonald's straight k lambda mu's? I don't know. That's an open question. Ah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Thanks. So what are McDonald's uh, straight K lambda mu's? McDonald's straight K lambda mu's are, if you take J lambda QT and you expand it in terms of the big shores, then you get the straight K lambda mu's. Yeah, I described this in my last lecture. So, yeah, so this is the integral, integral form of the McDonald polynomial form of P lambda. And these are, these are dual to the usual shores under the T inner product. So those are McDonald's case. Okay, thanks. So Arun, uh, so you had this P uh, Q T and P Q Q T. Yes. Right? And then one you said was monomial, like monomial. The other one was sure. Yes. Uh, yes. Now, so. Uh, perhaps you I'm going to ask a question which perhaps you have answered and I don't realize it is there. Uh, so is there something uh, that interpolates between these two? I mean, there is something that we know in the classical case that interpolates between monomial and show. Um, well, the, the McDonough polynomials themselves somehow interpolate. So, 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 so some, somebody, I don't know, no, maybe this beautiful picture, which, um, so this is the Q, Q axis, and this is the T axis. And so on this diagonal, you have P lambda TT, which is the same as the Shure function. And in general, and so here you have P lambda Q zero, and here you have P lambda zero T, and here you have P lambda, uh, so this is Q equal to one T, which is the elementary symmetric functions. And here you have P lambda Q one, which is the monomial symmetric functions. And so somehow these McDonald polynomials are themselves interpolating between shores and monomials. Um, but I, I don't know how to say something any more precise than that. Aha, uh -huh. okay, okay, okay. I think I got, it. so, okay. so the, uh, the Hall Littlewood did the, in the classical case, right? The whole little wood was sort of already doing that in the classical case, yeah. Yes, okay, got it. I, yeah. I think I understand what you're saying. Thanks. Yeah. I had a question about, well, maybe we, we don't need to record this answer if you feel, but uh, the, the, the miracle about independence from uh, um, T, I guess. The yeah. S it was, uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's said, a miracle. Do with uh, yeah. some BGG resolution, so maybe uh, you and Vishwanath, somebody could tell me what was the T in that in those resolutions? What does the T stand for? And 
sort of uh, how does that um, go away in the yeah yeah i i would have to search and think about it it's it's a the t of course is a c star action uh -huh, okay and and the um and the resolution is coming from oh right right so so you know that rani gupta and or rani berlinski and um constant and this story actually yeah Vishwanath, you maybe you can say the answer to this so that's they write it the dual hall little woods and uh, and an alternating sum formula in which you can put the and Braverman had a very nice geometric way of saying the same thing at least so so the answer is no I, I can't tell you but I it's it's somehow in the air and mostly known <laughs> but sure. I think at last the last person who explained it to me pretty well was Braverman Thanks. No, at some very uh, naive level, I guess, if you are trying to expand, I mean, the P lambdas are triangular in the sense that have, it's got an X lambda and smaller terms. So even if it has T's in it, I mean, just naively, you can always expand any function in terms of the P lambdas and get some coefficients uh, uh, because of just the triangularity, right? You can always invert the relation. I mean, just at a very crude, naive. It's something you can always do. So, so if you're crude, I mean, so maybe then in that language, maybe my question in an equally naive way would be to ask if if you take the usual BGG, so I mean, is that C star action part of the usual BGG resolution? So there's somehow the T already present, but then eventually when you get to the finite dimensional object, it vanishes or something? Like, is that is are we refining the usual BGG resolution as an extra T data? Is that what happens? Well, let's let's th think a little bit about the usual constant story. So, so I take the the highest weight module of highest weight lambda, right? Right, and I take the regular nilpotent element, uh, and I look at its action on on the module of highest weight lambda. Mm -hmm. So the regular nilpotent will, of course, raise things up until they get to the highest weight. And then when it hits the highest weight, it will go to zero. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I can filter my module according to how many times I apply the regular nilpotent before it dies. So I get the highest weight is up at the top and it dies right away. And then I can look at things that die after one step and then die after two steps and so on. And this filtration of the module is exactly the filtration you need to pick up these Koska Fuchs polynomials. Uh -huh. okay. okay, so now if you push that through Borel V bot, you you can sort of see where the where the C star has to be, but uh, there are better ways of <laughs> saying it geometrically. Right. And then the fact that the left hand side is independent of T. It's just the fact that that's a simple, simple model that you. I don't. I don't know. I would have to think about it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. There are no more questions. Let's thank Arun Rao. I'll stop the recording. Okay.